Welcome back, guys. Today we're going to get started on this section right here. Or we're going to do that section right there. I shouldn't say get started. Um, to get started on it, though, what we're going to need to do is basically uh, this Tinker's compilation right here to do the alloy tank. We already have most of this. We already created a heater earlier. Uh, we're going to have to create a whole other setup for the uh, porcelain melter here, okay? So we're just going to make a second one of these right here, and then we'll have to create the alloy smelter between. So to get started with that, we're going to need porcelain, which is right here. To do that, we need the unfired porcelain, which just comes from the uh, clay and bone mill. Okay? So those are pretty straightforward. We should be able to make those. So go ahead and make your porcelain, and once you are your unfired porcelain, what you do, throw it in your smelter and make your porcelain bricks. Once you've made enough porcelain, we can then at that point create your melters. So we're going to create a melter. Tank. It's up to you on whether you create the basin, the kit table, and the faucet again. Not needed. They're just there. Once you have those, though, tank first. Melter on top. You'll notice it's activated again. Once you get all that laid out, then we just make our alloy tank. Alloy tank straightforward also. We're just going to need Two of these. Window. And then we can make our tank. Take your tank. You'll notice there's your achievement, by the way. Put your tank right here in the middle, and we'll get on how to use that here in a second. So first and foremost, before we get into any of this, the actual heater part underneath the alloy tank we need to feed that some fuel, so wood works just fine. And we have plenty of it, so why not? Just pop it in there like that, and it'll get started on it here in a second. So what the alloy tank allows us to do is take, like, we can fill one of these with lava, and the other with water, and you'll notice it's making obsidian in the middle. And you can just keep feeding these, and it'll continue to make it up to, up to levels of blocks. To get the obsidian out, you'll need to move over one of the uh, basins that you've got here, and one of those little faucets. And that'll basically, at that point, allow you to just pour it straight out. You'll find quickly that doing a full block of obsidian is just a little annoying in the aspects of it. It eats it so fast. So usually what I do at this point is I will actually create a couple of little things. There's a fluid extraction cable and a lava, lava fabricator I'll make. And then you're also going to need some of the, where is it, just the hardened, right there. The hardened fluidity duct to actually move the lava. So I'll start creating those three. You'll notice though, some of this gets a little annoying in the aspects of there's Invar involved and there's plastic involved. I've been kind of avoiding doing those, but at this point, we're going to go ahead and break into doing those because they're one of those things that we're going to need pretty much from here on. So once you have that cleared again from city and everything that way, you've got it completely empty, okay? To do the fluid extraction cables and things like this, okay, the first thing you're going to need is this hardened fluidity duct, to which case you're going to need Invar for that. Invar, you can pour in a cast style from molten. To do that, you need to alloy it, meaning nickel and iron, which is what this thing's supposed to be able to do. Okay. Now, I'll give you a good example of the way you use this according to the way they want you to do it and all that, and then I'll show you the way it's really going to go for me. So I grabbed some nickel amber and some iron amber, and the way they want you to do this, really, is you would take iron on one side, Nickel on the other. Once they melt together, you'll notice there's Invar in the middle. Now to, to simplify this, we've, we made a nugget or a uh, ingot maker earlier for the casting. So we're just going to go grab that real quick. Just 
So we only need two. That gets the invar we're going to need. Once you get your two invar, then the only other part would be the hardened glass you're going to need, which you can use a lot of different materials. We've already got lead, though. It's fairly easy. You just need one ingot of it. So grab yourself some of the obsidian you just made. Put it in a basin here. And then get yourself just a piece of lead. Which we should have. Ah, I got one ingot. Look at there. Hi. Pop it in, let it melt real quick. It makes our hardened glass. Once we've got the two environs and the hardened glass, we can then make our cabling, or our fluid duct, I should say. It makes six of those. We'll use those here in a second. Next part of my auto system, I can already make the fluid extractor. That's pretty easy, straightforward too. I just made the duct here, so that's not that big a deal. But the hardest part of this whole little arrangement is going to be this lava uh, fabricator. And that's because of the plastic. So we're going to get started on making every bit of this. We're going to save plastic for last, and we'll go through the whole breakdown on that. So just to get kind of going with it, though, we've already got the obsidian and the redstone. So blaze rods and magma cream come next. Blaze rod should be pretty easy in that we already knew hellish matter. We covered that earlier. Bone, we can just get from the bone amber that we've got from the tree. Which we can just craft it right here. So let's just make a mess of that. And then while we've got this open, let's go ahead and make our, us a mess of bones. Once we get the bones, We're going to, at that point, make blaze rods. Next part of this is the magma creams, which you should be able to make pretty straightforward. Blaze powder, which we made a tree for earlier, and the slime, which we have a tree for already. So just make yourself a mess of those. Add those to your system. The, sh the machine casing, or case, is straightforward. It's nothing major here. Should you be able to just straight out craft it out. And that's going to leave us down to just the plastic. So the last little bit we need here would be the plastic. And this is where we get into a little bit of a mess. Plastic comes from dry rubber. Any which way you look at it comes from dry rubber. Dry rubber comes from tiny rubber trees. Or, try, I'm sorry, tiny dry rubber. <laughs> tiny or dry rubber comes from a latex processing unit. To which case a latex processing unit needs latex. It'll even tell you. Latex processing unit, power, water, latex. Well, latex comes from trees. It can be many different types of trees. I know some of the uh, mods out there, you have to pull it from like a rubber tree or whatever. You don't have to do that in this one. It can come from all kinds of different trees. But the deal is, it has to come from tree, basically. Okay, now oak wood works just fine, so it's, we don't need to do too much craziness on that. And I'll, if you want to go crazy with it, th this actually will provide you with more, but it's not, you know, that big of a deal in terms of this mod. Okay, just get latex. To do that, you know, we, you need a tree fluid extractor. So this is what we're going to be making next. The actual tree fluid extractor doesn't have much to it. For the most part, you should have a stone already. You can make the gears real easy. The furnace is probably about the only thing you don't have, which just make yourself a furnace. Once you got that, that should get your tree fluid extractor. The way the machine works is you can see it's starting to crack that. It will eventually, just like as if you would do a, a piece of wood that you would pick up yourself, You'll notice the little cracks form on the top. It's exactly the way the machine works. You'll see the little cracks form on the top as, as it goes on. And it'll continue to fill with latex here. Mm. The deal though is, whenever it finishes processing this whole block, it will then remove the piece of wood, and you would have mm. to then lay down another piece of wood for it to keep up with latex. 
You can remove the latex with pretty much a bucket or your fluid, you know, piped out to whatever you want it to be, a tank or whatever, but that's just how it works. And it does take it a while, as you can see. There's no real way to hurry it up or anything like that. It just has to do its job. So it's one of those things you kind of want to get this thing running and keep it running, especially if you use a lot of plastic. And there's no way to make it faster or anything. So you kind of want it running all the time at, at best capacity and create yourself a tank to stick it in as much as you can. So with that said, you're going to want an automatic system at some point. So there's two type of block, block placers you can get in the game. One is here, which is part of uh, industrial for reforging, mm. or what is it, forging? Well, foregoing, whatever. Um, and the, and the other one's a cyclic, um, hush people, I hear you laughing, I know. Uh, anyway, this one takes plastic to make, so you know, a little more processing mm. and all that involved into it. It also takes power. Uh, I always make this one instead because it's just easier. And you can pretty much straightforward make that right now. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, this one we're going to need a dispenser for, to which case the dispenser we're going to need a bow for. To which case that we're going to need the string for. So not too big of a deal. Mm. And there's our block placer. We'll take it, line it up the direction we want it to go. That did not work out right. That should be facing that direction now. And just load it with your wood, and that'll keep that. You'll notice the uh, wood's about to crack there. It'll keep it dispensing wood mm. to this one at all times. Or not all times, but as long as it has wood in it, it should uh, continue to place a block there. So that gets our latex processing, or uh, producing, I should say. And once we've got it producing, then we just need to process it. So for that, we're going to need the processing unit first, which is just, should be, I think, for straightforward crafting. We need, what, two furnaces? Mm. And there we go. And that machine's going to need power. So the easiest way to do power over here is we would just take our flux duct, which we've connected up over here, and we would continue to lay it down and circle around, and eventually we'd reach way over here. Or pick the whole mess and move it over here. I really felt like doing it, but I'm not going to do any of those. We're going to get into using flux points and plugs at this point because they're just a better solution in my opinion. There's other ways to do this in this game too, but I like the flux ones. They just work real easy. So the first part of this is going to be our plug, which is for adding energy in, okay? Plug straightforward in terms of what you've created is a flux core mm. and a flux block. These are just obsidian and flux, which flux is just redstone that's been burned, basically. So we're going to start mm. off just creating a bunch of the flux. I'm just going to go over to my furnace, pull out some redstone. And we'll get that stuck or started. In which case, as you can see, that makes flux. Once you get your flux added, then you should be able to create a flux core, which is just going to be the obsidian, the flux, and an ender eye, which the ender eye is probably about the only part you'd not have to make. Yep, ender eye. Blaze and ender pearls, which case you should have all that. You just make yourself a mess of those. And that's going to create you four of the flux cores. Once you've created your flux cores, then you got to make a flux blocks, which is the flux cores and a f the flux. So you got everything to make at least one of them. Go ahead and do so. And then you'll just have to create enough to create your second one, and that should make your flux plug. So once you have your plug created, that's the one that adds power into it, okay? Just find a place anywhere in your power grid, which I just picked right next to my generator. It's pretty straightforward. 
You can pick either which side, doesn't really matter. Plug it in though, and then you have to create a network. I'm just going to create a network, doesn't matter on what I want to call it, anything like that. There it is, public. And create. So why is that not letting me do it? And just put it on the network. You'll notice it turns blue when it's activated and it'll tell you how much it's actually processing and everything. Now on the other end, we're going to need the flux point. Okay, It's for removing energy. Flux point again, straightforward in terms of you'll need the flux cores again and then you'll need a redstone block. And that'll create your point. So this is deciding where you want the power to end up at. Which, we've got the latex processing unit over here. So I'm just going to attach it to that. You'll notice there's no power in here. Once I connect it into my network, I should have power. To move our latex over, we're going to take that duct we made earlier, and we're just going to put it between the two. But you'll notice it's not really transferring at this point, okay? So we need a way to pull it out of here, and so what we're going to need is a servo. They make different levels of servos, that kind of thing and all. The easy one to make is just this. You'll eventually work your way up the line here and all. But to just make a straight up simple servo, it's pretty easy. Just get, make sure you got glass, iron nuggets, piece of iron, redstone, providing you got that, that'll make you two servos. Attach it to the side that you want to pull from and turn it on. You should notice the uh, cable looks like it's got fluid going between it, and you'll notice we are filling up with latex. As long as this machine has latex to give, this machine will take it. You'll notice that's actually happening live there. So the last part we got to deal with is water. So the easiest thing to do, of course, is get yourself a bucket of water and haul it over, you know? Nothing major in that. You'll notice it's starting to, to process the tiny rubber and all, but you notice the water ran out pretty quick, and like I said earlier, we want to do an automatic solution on this, so I don't have to keep babysitting it. So to move water to this automatically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a thing called a fluid transfer node. Okay? They're fairly straightforward in terms of how they work. We'll show you how that works and all, but to make this thing, you're going to need a couple things you don't have, mainly being the sponge and the press marine. You'll notice we get, we've already made everything neat except for going with those two. So the Presmarine is fairly straightforward. It needs the Overland Ma World Matter and Nether Crystals. We have all that. So let's go ahead and make ourselves a batch of that. And then add, add that to our system. Once we've added that to our system, then we can come back into here. And you'll notice this, that now the sponge is the only thing we're missing. Now, a couple of things on this is it's a wet sponge or sponge, either which way, okay? Doesn't matter. matter. Sponge comes from wet sponge, wet sponge, from mm -hmm. sponge. So those don't matter on smelting. Hydrator, though, is the way you get a sponge. Okay, so you're going to need to create a hydrator. So for the hydrator, we're going to need two buckets of water, a dropper, a block of iron, clay, and terracotta. Terracotta is being the weirdest one in terms of it's just clay that's burned. Okay, so we just create all that. So we're going to need uh, what is it, two buckets of water. We need our dropper. Mm. Blocks of clay. Right, no, nope. gonna create the clay. Mm. And our terracotta, which we gotta burn some clay. Mm. We'll just start that going. And we'll let that create a block. And once we've added that, then we can make our hydrator. So we did create our hydrator, which can now create our sponge. However, we need ice to be able to use that. So we need dirt and ice, three ice again, to make a sponge. We've already added water to this. We just need, the, we've got the dirt we could add, but we need the ice. The ice, we've got two ways of doing this. There's a froster 
which we could make, which it makes all kinds of different things and all that, but it takes plastic. Or we can make a solidifier, and it'll work too. So either which one of these, your choice on which way you make them, you just want to make ice with them. I need to do the solidifier option just because I don't want to have to mess with the plastic right this second. But the solidifier is straightforward. You just need the observer. Go in here. There we go. Observer, which we should just be able to make. Then you're going to need the glowstone, glow dust, which is, you know, just comes from glow dust. So make yourself a stack of that, okay? Then once you got that block of iron, you should have. And then you just need the lily pads, which the lily pads are the overland rolling matter and the vines, which, again, the vines uh, are jungle saplings dried out. If you don't have any already, you should already have. I'm going to pull those out and pull those out. And then I can make my lily pads. Make yourself a stack of those, too. And then you can make your solidifier, finally. Now, the solidifier does have one little issue, which is you can't just, like, take a bucket and put water into it. It just doesn't work. Okay? So with it, we're going to go ahead and make this fluid extraction cable that we was talking about earlier. Earlier? earlier. Yeah, can't talk today. Earlier. We're going to go ahead and make that and uh, get that working. Once you get your extraction cable made, then you're going to need to have something to connect it to. We're going to run it up to this right here. If we do it this way though, you'll notice how it connects to the bottom. We need our wrench to disconnect that part, okay? Then we can connect our extraction cable to it, and we're going to use our wrench to just angle it into the water. You'll notice that's pumping water into there, and we're set to go on this side of things. Next step is to take our solidifier and just put it anywhere convenient to you along this little path so that it can collect water from this piping system, which you'll notice it does. Once that's placed, going back to our recipe again, we wanted the sponge, right? We have a hydrator, which we need ice for, which we needed a uh, solidifier for, which it takes a stick, which we now have set up. So I'll take sticks, put them in, And so that's going to start creating our ice. And, like everything else, get yourself a stack of that, at least. So now that I've got all that made, I can now go in and actually create my fluid transfer node. To make the fluid transfer node work, I need to have a place to send it from, which I need a GPS marker to work with. GPS marker, I go for this right here, which is just bone mill and, and uh, lapis. Create myself a stack of that and go ahead and greet myself my GPS marker also. So now that we've got our GPS, our fluid transfer node and our GPS marker made, mm -hmm. take your GPS marker, walk over and decide where you want to put it. Okay? You can just dug down, click on it, change it wherever you want it to be, okay? <laughs> go over and then connect your transfer your fluid transfer node up to your actual piping here, okay? Not to a machine or anything like that, just to the piping. Okay? You'll notice it filling with water, providing everything is working correctly. And at that point, then you can put your GPS marker in, and you'll notice the water start to go away. That's because it's transferring over to your machine. And you'll notice your machine is now producing. And providing you keep this thing full of blocks here, of wood, this thing will produce tiny rubber pretty much forever. Now that we have tiny rubber producing, usually you wait until you get a stack at least. You can wait until you need more or whatever. But get yourself a stack of that. Come over to your crafting table. We're going to make the dried rubber, which is nine of these, okay? Once you get the dried rubber, then you just need to burn it, pretty much. Burn your oven over here, and it'll start producing plastic. 
And of course, like everything else, get yourself a stack and add that to your system. And now that we have plastic finally, we can now make our lava, lava fabricator, which is what started this whole mess in the first place. Once you place your lava fabricator, you'll notice you you uh, just pipe it up basically. You'll need the hardened flux duct again. Connect it up. You'll need to make another servo if you haven't got one already. And then the last start you'll need is power. To which case, all our power is way over there. Well, let's just make another one of those points. Make ourselves another flux point. Connect it into our network. And we'll start creating lava. Now, fair warning on this, you may not want to turn this on permanently because it is a resource hog when it comes to lava. So this thing will create forever and it just eats and eats and eats until it is full. You'll notice it already stopped on me. It's still trying to full, fill itself up and it won't create lava until it gets full. So this is like, you'll use it more as you get better power sources, but for now you'll probably want to turn it on and off as you go. So once I get everything to this point with the lava making here, the water here, this will make obsidian in the middle for me pretty well and easy. I go ahead and I take down, I had a hopper and everything attached to this. I take all the hopper down. I have the item mover hooked up to this. I take it down. I even take down the casting basins and everything. I don't need none of this. Okay, I, I keep it in inventory just in case I want to use it later, but I don't need any of this. So what I do now is I create my take one of the casting basins, put it out here, get my duct, connect it up to right there. Grab me a servo. I'll start pumping it that way and you'll notice it's making me obsidian. In which case, connect my add -on item duct up and my item transfer node again. One more servo. That's going to start moving that item over. And this is what I'll connect up to my end, over into my item transfer chest again. So now, we pretty much have endless subsidian, as long as we keep power supplied to the lava generator. And like I say, I'll turn that on and off as I need it, because I don't need obsidian that much, but that's what this becomes, and it just stays this way for pretty much ever. So now what we've done is we basically tied up our melters that we've created and everything to make obsidian, which we don't necessarily need right now, but that's what we're going to do with it, which means we don't have a way to deal with alloys and all that, pretty much, which is what we're about to create. If you go back in here and you look in your book, okay, there's a thing where it talks about a smell tree. Smell tree, it'll tell you all the de details on how to make it and all this. If you've never done it, most of y'all probably have dealt with this in another mod. But either which way, one of the key ingredients of the thing is the smell tree. Smeltery can be right here, anywhere from 11, I mean, sorry, 3 to 3 to 11 to 11, okay? You're going to want to strive towards this 11 to 11 at some point in time, but in the very beginning, we just need a 3 to 3. So what we're going to do to do that is we're going to need a couple of things, okay? First, we're going to need the seared bricks to make the eggs from smeltery out of, which means we're going to need, I'm sorry, I said that wrong. No, I did say that right. Seared bricks, which comes from... Um, seared brick <laughs> and then the uh, seared brick you just get by uh, burning uh, searing smelting grout okay grout just comes from sand gravel and clay all that you can get from your trees so we should be able to actually just go in here and make some yep 
Make yourself a stack of that. Actually, you're going to need more to stack, but in the beginning of stack, get that going towards making your uh, bricks. Oh, I had more plastic in there. You'll need four of the uh, bricks to be able to. Uh, oh my head! You need four of the bricks to actually make the uh, craft the uh, seared brick. So get that, cook it up, and uh, do you enough to where you could do a three by three uh, dull block. I usually create myself honestly about four to five stacks of these, and because uh, I know I'll use them, and I'll use more than those too. Okay, once you get your seared brick, okay, you're gonna need to create a couple things. You'll need the seared bricks, to which case you can make any of these versions. You don't need to use the one I'm using. You can make any of these you want. It just to me, it's more work, so no need to do that. But anyway, you'll need seared bricks. You're going to need a seared drain, a controller, and a tank. I believe that's all you need. But anyway, um, the drain pretty straightforward. We're just going to create a drain. Okay. You're going to need a controller, and you're going to need a tank. Now, with that said, I said A, the controller, I believe, is the only thing you cannot have multiple of. You can have multiple drains on this thing if you want. You can have multiple tanks if you want. Whatever you want to do with it, it's just, you you know, I believe it's only one controller. But anyway, make, make all that and make sure you get the seared brick too, okay? And then we'll get into constructing this. So first off, give yourself a big area for this thing, okay? Because like I said, this thing eventually we want it to have a, be like 11 by 11. The very beginning, though, we don't have room for that, okay? So you need a 3x3 three three at the minimal, okay? Now, when it says 3x3, three three, that means 3 on the outside, okay? So to get going, the easiest way is do a 3x3, three three, okay? And my goal would be don't make it any smaller than this. It's just not worth it, okay? Otherwise, you're right back to a melter pretty much. But once you've created that, you have to have the bottom filled in too. Get yourself at least one layer. Once you've got it like that, then you can decide which way you want everything to face and all. It's up to you on how you do it. I'm going to make my heat here, a thing there, and I'm going to put my drain thick there. Okay? So I'm going to put my... Yeah, I'm going to do it that way. This will be my tank. This I'm going to make my drain. And then this this is my controller. Providing I did everything correctly, you'll notice it lights up. This works pretty much like the uh, melter over there. It's got kind of the same interface, everything. You can just take stuff, throw it in there. And you'll need to provide it with uh, source fuel, which again would be like lava like we did earlier. Okay. You'll notice you can see what's in it from the top also. Okay. So one thing you can do not necessarily recommended though, is you can take stacks of stuff and just throw it in there and it'll work the same way. So it's up to you on how you load it and all. Most people will just, and you'll notice it keeps filling it in as I had uh, dropped the whole stack in there. Once the stack's out, then it'll keep on, it'll quit. The bad part of that is if you don't smelt quick enough, it can disappear because it's like any other item in terms of dropping stuff. So most people will connect a chest up and, you know, use a hopper, that kind of thing to get it in there. Choice is yours on how you do it. Fuel source wise, lava is the easiest thing to deal with, which again, we can just make another lava generator or fabricator, I think is what they call it. Yeah. You can just create another one of these and it'll load lava in there for all we want. Or you can also connect the, uh, one of the uh, fluid movers to it, do it that way. Any which way you want to do it that way, doesn't really matter. Just a matter of throwing it with lava. 
And then just like the melter, you can use every bit of this again. You can use the uh, tables, the basin, every bit of this. It doesn't look as good on this uh, as the other ones, but just pop it down. And it'll work just like the melter did. Same rules apply. So getting back on track of our missions here, okay? Enchantment table is the easiest one to do right now. So we're just going to do that. Enchantment table, book, obsidian, diamond. Should be straightforward with what we've got already. Need to create a book. That's our enchantment table. And that's got that achievement done. It's a little weird gadget thing is the next thing to make that's easiest. It's just a chunk loader. It'll keep an area active and we'll use that later on with some of the stuff we're going to do. It's right here. It's pretty straightforward in terms of things you should already have. So just make that guy and then I'll get that achievement done. So the next three years a bunch of stuff we'll have to gather and create and all that. So we're going to do this section by section kind of. So we're just going to start with the uh, inventory crafting part, which this is going to be pretty much for all three of these, but we're just going to start with the very bottom one and work our way through them. Crafting table, we pull it in. We've got the diamond and the nether crystal, and that's pretty much it. The emerald, we should be able to just make outright. Right there. The potato, we'll have to do some stuff with the fish. We'll have to go fishing. The cookie, we actually should be able to make, I believe, here also. Yep, we can do cookies. The cake, we need to gather some milk to do, but I believe we got everything else for that. Uh, the pumpkin pie, we need to make pumpkins. And then, of course, the crafting table is just straight up a crafting table. Oh, I'm out of planks. So we'll go through those real quick. For the fish, we go fishing. And there's our fish. For your poisonous potato, the easiest thing to do is get yourself potatoes any which way you can, which get yourself a bone mill and pull yourself out a stack and just start hitting your grass with it pretty much. If you happen to get uh potato seeds just by hitting around. That's awesome, okay? To which case I did. If I didn't know, then I would continue to hit the, uh, I would continue to get wheat until I had enough to where I'd go over here to my market guy and he also has potato seeds. It's just he wants a wheat for it. So that's why I say if you can get over the grass, do it. Once you have your potato seeds, though, it's like anything else. Get your spot, do that, and bone mill them. And then what you do is you just keep bone milling. Get yourself where you can see what drops here. Just keep bone milling these until you get mm. it's messing with me. There we go. Until you get a poisoned one. For our cake, we should have the wheat already. We're going to probably need the sugar and eggs. Yep, we need the sugar, eggs, and milk. So we need three of the milk, to which case uh, we just get our buckets back out. Well, steadily ever increasing buckets. Mm. We should hopefully still have our cow. There's our cow. We got our chickens still here. So there's our chickens. Mm. And we just need the sugar. Which we got sugar cane for. And that should get our cake. For the pumpkin pie, we need a pumpkin. We got the sugar and egg, but we need a pumpkin. Pumpkin, you could try to create with the nature essence, stuff like that. It's just annoying. But Easiest way is to get yourself pumpkin seed. Mm. Pumpkin seed is like everything else. We can either bone mill it, and we'll see if we get lucky. We'll try. Mm. 
Mm. What do we get? Beat. Hey, look, we got pumpkin seed. Oh, cool. Now, just like everything else, if we didn't get pumpkin seed, we could go over here. And he wants a gold ingot for it. So it's not bad on that at all. It's just, you know, again, if we don't have to. Why? Pick yourself a spot. Put your pumpkin seed in there. Pumpkin seed, you can't really bone mill. You can to a, to a point, but at that point, you're just waiting on it to create a pumpkin. So on this one, you do kind of got to wait, but go do other things while you're waiting. And at some point, you'll get your pumpkin. There you go. Make sure you replay it that, by the way, if you happen to tear that up. You want to make sure that stays down there. Good, make your pumpkin pie. And that'll take your inventory cake. No, what did I miss? I missed the crafting bridge? Really? Hmm. Oh, yeah, that's right. I was missing my wood. There we go. Now we can create my crafting bench. And that'll make my, in my uh, inventory cake. Once you get it, eat it. And that completes that achievement. The inventory upgrade achievement. It's pretty straightforward also. You just need the inventory upgrade cake, which is pretty straightforward again. Just go make sure you get your milk first, three of those, because you're going to need another cake. And pop that in. The only things you'll need to create, otherwise, providing you've got everything, go get you another fish, another potato, everything which we covered last time. Go ahead and make your cake again. Make your pumpkin pie again, which you're going to need the pumpkin for. What am I missing? An egg? I'm missing an egg. You guys got an egg for me? Yep, they do. Good. Mm. And then the last part is the cinder chest, which is just your obsidian, which we've been making, mm -hmm. and the ender eye. So that should be straightforward also. Make your cake and eat it. Mm -hmm. And that creates, gets that achievement. So this last one, which is the heart container, is the biggest one pain in the butt wise. It's not that big a deal, but either which way, it's the uh, heart container here. So you just search up. And it, for the most part, you have most of this stuff, or you can make it fairly easy. But some of it gets a little annoying. So we'll just go through it. If I go to straight up craft it, it tells me I'm missing what's here, which is my golden apple. I should have enough gold and apples from doing the trees and all that. So that's straight, pretty straightforward. Once I got that, then the next one is block of emerald, which provides I've been doing my job on uh, get, keeping up with the uh, trees. I should have enough emerald by this point to either have it or have enough to create it to get my emerald block. Next part is my pumpkin pie, which we've already covered plenty. <laughs> and then the last part is going to be this rabbit stew, which the rabbit stew is the biggest part of it all, mainly because of the mushrooms and the cooked rabbit. So we'll go through that one individually here. Okay, so from the get-go, we'll start at the bottom. Wooden bowls? Bowls. Straightforward. Easy. Make yourself a stack of them. Why not? Carrots, we can make with just seeds and overload material, or you can just do like I do everything else and go over here and get your bone mill, go for carrots, or go over to the other guy and get your carrots that way. Either which way, I'm going to go for the bone mill solution, just because it's worked for me majority-wise. Ah, carrot seeds. I am, by the way, not rigging this. I am just getting very lucky. So no complaints on that for me. And there's my carrot. I 
let's do the next part is the baked potato. So you're gonna need a potato. Which you should have plenty of by now. And you just cook it. And like everything else, cook you up a stack of that. Now, if you're me, you earlier got lettuce seeds also, so I'm going to use those to get my lettuce. If not, then same thing here. Bone mill your grass till you get some lettuce seeds, or go over to the uh, little merchant guy. Get them that way. But in my case, I'm just going to bone mill them, or uh, lay my seeds down and bone mill them. And I needed, ah, exactly that. One piece of lettuce and one seed. So the last part of this is the actual rabbit stew and mushrooms. Rabbit we're going to do first. Rabbit you can go in here and you can actually get this from the uh, merchant guy for some carrots. Or you can just make your seed which is carrot, uh, lettuce seeds, and lettuce which uh, we'll just, you know, get the lettuce by bone milling. Once I have my rabbit seed, just like everything else, we're going to come over here. Lay it down. Bone mill it until we get our rabbit, which he takes 20 minutes to grow again. And if you want to go crazy like me, you do just like everything else, mm. and you go get yourself a stack of carrots. Cut him down to a minute. Let's let me go past a minute on him. Check that out. Pretty cool. Once he's an adult, kill him. There's your piece of rabbit. You'll cook your rabbit, and that'll make it to where the only thing you got to worry about is a mushroom. All right, mushroom-wise, there's a couple of options. This one's not bad, but problem is it takes a mushroom to get it going. But later on in the game, it's actually one of the options I'll probably go into. Um, the mark is the easiest. Um, other than that, you can actually create like a little area in your base where literally sunlight doesn't get into and bone mill the grass there and it'll create a mushroom most likely. But it's kind of annoying in the aspects that work. So I'm just going to do the uh, market guy on this one. It's just the easiest. And there's our mushroom. There's our rabbit stew. There's our heart container. Don't forget to eat it. And there's your achievement. Okay, so the only one we haven't done yet, other than these two, which we're just going to do over time, is the glitch armor set, which we're going to hold off on that too until our next video because this one's pretty involved. Uh, it's going to take some time to do. We're going to have to do a lot of stuff to get the actual glitch armor. So I'm not going to do that one yet just because of how involved it is and all that. We'll come back around to it in our next video though. So that's going to do it for this video though. Hopefully y'all have enjoyed. Hopefully you've learned some things and uh, hopefully it's helped you out. Uh, as always, uh, please like, subscribe, turn the notification on for when I release the next one, and uh, I'll see y'all then. Other than that, y'all have a good one, and do thank you for watching.